few seconds ahead of time, but uh, this is the uh, Littleton Planning Commission. This is a regular meeting of the Planning Commission. Uh, we have one item of business in the public hearing, and with uh, fortune, we will adjourn to a special study session later in the evening. Um, so it is January 10th, 2011, and if we could have a roll call, please. Commissioner Bachenstead? Here. Turn on. Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Coronado? Commissioner Arteria? Here. Commissioner Newfinke? Here. Commissioner Van Here. Ranville? Here. Commissioner Samuelson? Com Commissioner Stravopoulos? Commissioner Metcalf? And uh, we do have a quorum. We have um, our second alternate uh, filling in tonight, Jenny, and um, fortunate that she is here and we have two alternates, so we can proceed. Uh, second item on our agenda is changes to the agenda. Are there any suggested uh, changes? Seeing none, we have uh, minutes from the October 11th, 2010 meeting. Are there um, any suggestions, corrections to those minutes, commissioners? None. 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 Do I have a motion for their approval, please? So moved. In a second. Second. Second to Linda. That was uh, Julio made. All right. Uh, with no further discussion, all those in favor of approval? Oh, Jenny. There we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, on the tally board, uh, Commissioner Randville is uh, listed as Metcalf because we don't have the ability to change that. So they are approved. Um, no items of general business, and we do not have any unscheduled uh, public appearances, I don't believe. We do. Yes. All right, then uh, this is the time. Um, we would like you to limit yourself to three minutes, please, if you can. Yeah, she's got her stopwatch or, <laughs> or uh, sand clock or something. Yeah. Um, hopefully three th quick things. I saw the comp sure. plan. Oh, please introduce yourself oh, just sorry. for the record. Thank you. I'm Everybody knows. Um, <laughs> I am Pam Chadbourne. I live at um, 5402 one. South Nevada Street, which is in the northern part of the downtown football. And I'm very interested in downtown Littleton comp plan, which you're going to discuss tonight. I wanted to uh, <clears throat> reiterate some goals for street lighting that I've mentioned before that I think need to be in the comp plan. Um, we ought to restrict light trespass into homes, whether it's for current residents or some future high density residents. Uh, it is not appealing to have light glare into homes. So that should be restricted for the attractiveness and future prosperity of the community. <clears throat> um, we shouldn't install streetlights that glare into driver's eyes. That's a liability issue, and the city should not subject us to that liability. <clears throat> so um, <laughs> that hasn't quite gotten in yet, but that's extremely important. Um, liability shouldn't, shouldn't be uh, taken for poor reasons or unnecessary reasons. Um, add street lighting downtown has been deficient for de decades. We do need some more lighting. <clears throat> Um, but we don't need as much as are in the Sternberg lighting plan. We should control costs of installation, operation, and maintenance. We should implement a more attractive plan. Um, <clears throat> there are great street lighting fixtures that are extremely attractive, downward directed, dark sky compliant, resident friendly, business friendly. Um, <clears throat> it's the time now to consider a switch to that plan for implementation north of Maine and then a transitional plan for along Main Littleton Boulevard and um, Bowles. <clears throat> so uh, that's my first point, comp plan. 
Second, the mayor has asked Jim Woods to have the city staff prepare proposed changes to the city lighting ordinance, which may be Jan. Um, and the staff is going to present that January 25th. I don't know if that's an open meeting. That's a meeting that is for a Denver water item. <clears throat> so um, I called the staff and I heard that there are three things to be included in this update. Uh, old, update old terminology, add security lighting rules, and add a variance process. <laughs> None of these address the things that I've been talking about for months. Security lighting is a red flag. Um, it, it can't, there's a perception that more light is safer light and that's absolutely not true, it's been proven. Uh, there's crime in highly lit areas and crime in no light areas and crime everywhere. It's not lighting that is the key to controlling crime. So I'm worried about that particular issue. And I wanted the Planning Commission, as, as far as I understand it, this is a planning staff item. It will be brought here. And so I want to alert you to it and ask you to watch out for it. I will be watching for it. And uh, let's see what's in there. And I want to know why some of these resonant issues are not in there. And third, I have a... This is a, a, a idea, a concept. I got a proposal from a um, Boulder lighting firm. They do the Denver Mall, the Boulder Pole Street Mall, the Union Station lighting. They're nationwide though, and uh, this isn't exactly what I asked them to do, but this is a concept that they gave back to me. One thing I want you to note, it's not $40,000, it's less than $10,000. Two, we don't have a street lighting expert on staff, which is appropriate. You only do this periodically. So it's reasonable to pay for this periodically because street lighting is over a million bucks a year in the budget. And last year it overran by more than 10%. It is time to look at this issue. So um, <clears throat> I wanted to offer you this as a data point. It can be done and I'd like the city to consider it. Uh, finally, in light of the shooting in Arizona, I wanted to thank everybody for their service. Uh, as I understand it, these, this group of folks isn't even paid, so I really appreciate you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, uh, I, I, I will presume that uh, the handout, which we haven't had a chance to look at, uh, that Ms. Chadborn gave us, um, would be available should someone uh, from a citizen or anyone else would come in and ask we for a copy. Um, I think that and as a point of clarification, the meeting on lighting is an open meeting. All council meetings are open meetings, but it's a study session, so public comment will not be taken. Um, however, it's an add-on to the agenda. So Denver Water will go first, and then I believe at 830 they're scheduled for lighting. And After actually, that, it'll come to Planning Commission and then to a public hearing. And we actually, uh, Jan and I talked to the city manager this afternoon about changing that uh, to the first meeting in February. Okay. So that's what he's proposing to the mayor. The mayor actually asked that be put on their agenda. And we're asking that be put in February to give us time to um, meet one more time with our consultant uh, okay. before we bring it to them. So we're looking at that first meeting in February instead. So. And we certainly encourage you to come to that as well. So. Sure. There, there will be... Uh, public input at a couple meetings on changes to the ordinance. The ordinance is um, not to be confused with a possible lighting plan that would be developed later for not only downtown but perhaps the entire city. We've considered that as an element of our comprehensive plan update and um, will take quite a bit of uh, consideration both from the Planning Commission and from consultants. So uh, thank you, Ms. Chadborn. All right. Um, any other unscheduled public appearances? Uh, apparently not. We have a couple other guests. Um, that brings us to item six, public hearing, which is uh, has one item. 
uh, Graham's Creative Kids Learning Center Conditional Use, 5950 South Platte Canyon Road. It is case number CDU 10-0003. And as we normally do, there'll be a presentation from staff. Jan, I think, has uh, got this one. And um, commissioners, you've all got a packet. Let me just note also that uh, um, We've uh, we had a quorum before. We've uh, got Kurt who arrived, and it, not a problem. It's uh, difficult streets and weather out there. Um, since he is here in time to, for the beginning of this public hearing, he will be uh, a voting member, of course. And uh, any other commissioners that arrive and aren't here in time for the whole thing, I believe, would be available for discussion but wouldn't be able to vote. All right, Jan. Um, we also, um, I don't know if the applicant, I sort of presume that uh, some of the folks are there. They uh, will have an opportunity to comment. Um, I think I saw someone signing up on the sign-up sheet to comment, and so um, we'll have opportunity for comment, public comment on this hearing. And Jan's going to get that sign-up sheet now. We usually thoroughly allow time for back and forth. Sometimes these things. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. Yes, that's not the first time that uh, uh, that's worked out that way. So we seem to not have any other public comment, but uh, you'll certainly have a chance. All right, Jan. Uh, good evening, um, Planning Commission. I'd first I'd like to introduce the uh, exhibits. Uh, exhibit A, the city staff report and attachment. Exhibit B, the application and attachment. Exhibit C, the area reference map. Um, exhibit D, the city comp plan, the Goddard neighborhood by reference. Exhibit E, the city zoning ordinance by reference. Exhibit F, the official zoning maps by reference. Exhibit G, the proof of posting. <coughs> Exhibit H, the proof of publication, and Exhibit I, the public hearing roster. That's the uh, uh, the uh, applicant tonight is Graham's Creative Ki uh, Kids Learning Center, which is actually a daycare center that's been existing. Um, at the shops at Columbine Valley since, oh, 1998. They've been located in this building C. Um, the shops at Columbine Valley is, is at the um, southeast corner of Bowles and Platte Canyon, as you can see. The uh, area to the north of it is a retail shopping center that's zone B2. The area to the east is um, in the city of Littleton is a general, is an office area that's zone transitional and with a PD overlay. Uh, the area to the, the site area to the south of um, the shopping center is in the town of Columbine Valley, and it's a residential PUD. Um, as you can see from this map, this portion of it is developed. Uh, this little piece right here that's actually adjacent to the shopping center is a um, open space tract as part of that development. And then this area here is, is zone PUD residential, but it's currently vacant. And the property to the west of the shopping center across from Platte Canyon Road is in Arapahoe County. It's a PUD mixed use, and it's actually, um, property is actually a Denver Water Board right away. Um, <clears throat> uh, back in, uh, let's see, about 22 years ago, uh, the uh, conditional use for this property in 1989 was approved for a uh, daycare center. In 1998, uh, Mr. Graham uh, purchased this uh, business and uh, moved his facility into the shopping center and ran his, ran his daycare uh, since then. Um, his uh, space pre presently is occupied at 3,480 square feet in the freestanding building that's uh, building C1 here on the map. And... Um, his daycare is, is currently licensed for maximum number of 69 children, um, ages 6 weeks to 12 years. Um, the outdoor play areas are actually, it's kind of, this is a small map, but the outdoor play areas, you, it's kind of hard to see it here because these run right to the line, but the outdoor play areas currently exist in, on the um, 
the south side of Building C and along this area here between the major building and Building C. And uh, those uh, existing uh, play areas are currently fenced and they're screened by pretty thick uh, vegetation that I, um, is pretty obvious in an aerial photo that I included in your packet. The freestanding building, that's Building B, uh, currently has a restaurant in it called the 4G's and um, they will continue to occupy the majority of that building but uh, the Dick here would like to uh, expand its space into the easterly portion of this building occupying about 1,710 square feet. Um, what they plan to do is uh, create a daycare, uh, play, outdoor play area between the two buildings to expand the play area that they have to have outside for the additional children. And that will combine the two buildings. Uh, the uh, main entrance will still be in the original building C and uh, additional two classrooms will be in building one and the kids will obviously come in through the facility by going through the original building and then exiting from that building to building B to their classrooms. Um, Let's see, the uh, hours of operation currently are 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, and that won't change. The uh, operator uh, estimated to us that they uh, generate approximately 100 vehicle trips per day, round vehicle trips per day, and they anticipate that the expansion will add another vehicle, 50 vehicle round trips per day for a total of 150. And um, they, they were not required to actually do a formal traffic study for this because they were under um, 250 round trips, which is the cap on our requirement. Um, and also, uh, one of the requirements is that they be licensed by the Colorado Department of Human Services, and they have been since 1998. <laughs> And um, after, after they, if they get their approval tonight from you all, then they will work with the, the state to amend that present license and, and meet all their requirements. Um, I did have a question this morning uh, by Achera Brown regarding the fire department comments. Um, I indicated in my staff report that the applicant will be required to go through building permit and fire permit review and they'll be required to comply with all those requirements before getting their certificate of occupancy. And just to clarify things, the fire department did review this conditional use application as always. I, there was a little snafu in our computer system where they're supposed to be posting comments and it didn't quite post. So I did talk to him this afternoon and I got his memo and he did clarify that um, the proposed exits that they're, well, the exits they're proposing for that new uh, classroom section uh, meet their requirements and that the access gate, and I don't have the plan in front of you, but there's a, uh, there, there's obviously a fence that connect that connects the two buildings for the play area and there's access gate on that fence is proposed. And uh, he did comment that that actually does meet their requirements for being able to access in there. Um, but they would like, to, they will need to get more information from the applicant regarding the type of gate and the locking system and all. But they're, they're, that's pretty common for them. And I did want to confirm with him that my suggestion of, oh, there you go, adding bollards. The other thing I had suggested during the review process is in order to uh, create a better physical barrier between traffic coming this way and the play area here is, as we all know, fences don't work that way. So I had suggested they... Uh, uh, place bollards here and the fire department was perfectly fine with that. In fact, he told me that there's never too many bollards as far as they're concerned. So, so I hope that addresses some of those comments. Could you specify who it was with the fire department? It was um, Tim Stover. He's okay. a deputy fire marshal. Very good. Just for the record. Thank you. And um, let's see. And I, I won't go through all this. I did in my uh, staff report on pages three through five. Uh, reiterate the different criteria of the city code that relates to conditional use criteria for all general conditional uses and then those specifically for um, uh, daycare centers and private schools which um, basically you know require that the operators um, have obtained a license in accordance with the state and that the open play areas shall be screened or otherwise buffered to minimize noise and negative visual impacts on or from adjacent properties the play areas um, be protected from vehicular traffic by distance separation or physical barriers and that a safe drop-off pickup point for children shall be provided and that the pickup point actually is I mean right now I, I 
the leave, you know, the, the parents just come in and park and then they bring their child over. And I know from other condition, other daycares I've dealt with that they are actually required to physically take their child into the child care center, not just drop them off. But um, the uh, shopping center owner is here and I believe they're planning to also restripe this area and provide, designate to uh, uh, spaces specifically for the parents to be able to pull up and park the car and physically walk the child into the daycare center so they won't just be running through the parking lot. Um, Jan, could I interrupt you just for a moment? Um, I quickly reviewed um, late arrivals and we had one more commissioner come in. The uh, rules of procedure for us actually say, and I, this is why I'm interrupting you, that um, uh, if the, well, let me quote, uh, if in the sole discretion of the chair, the absent regular member has not missed a material part of the presentation, then the regular member shall be entitled to vote. If at the time of his or her arrival, uh, the parties have no objection. So this being close to the time of his arrival, I want to uh, be clear that uh, the staff nor the applicant have uh, no objection to Pablo's voting. I will uh, say that my discretion indicates that the information Jan has covered to this point was available in the packet and so he already presumably has reviewed that. So um, with that stated, uh, we have an additional voting member. All right, thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. Um Anyway, as uh, under conclusion and recommendation, I'd just like to conclude that um, staff finds that all the criteria for approval under Chapter 8 of the Littleton Zoning Ordinance in addition to other applicable criteria of the City Code have or will be met as described in the previous section of the report that I um, have given to you and also is attached in the Planning Commission Resolution Number 11-01. Staff recommends that the proposed amendment to the conditional use allowing for the expansion of Graham's Creative Kids Learning Center be approved subject to the following conditions. That number one, the number of children in care shall not exceed 101. Number two, the ages of children shall be within the range of infancy to 12 years of age. And three, the amount of floor area accommodating the child care center shall not exceed 5,240 square feet. And the, applic the applicant, uh, Mr. Graham is here to uh, make some presentation and answer questions more specifically about his daycare operation and 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 Mark Thomas is the shopping center owner and and he's here to also <laughs> provide you with any information or questions answers to questions so. um, commissioners let's start uh, perhaps if you have any brief questions for staff at this point and then uh, move to the presentation from the applicant is there anything I don't see anything I pressing one, one oh, okay oh sorry happy Please. new year Jan well thank you happy new year to you <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good but a lovely evening too <laughs> uh, seven the, degrees the according stock, to my car <laughs> stock show weather all right then um, uh, I, I have a couple minor questions, but I don't know if they're going to be addressed by the yeah. applicant and yeah I'm perfectly okay with waiting I, I, let's let's move forward yes. and, and uh, get the pre all presentations out of the way and see if that covers it and then we can come back. Thank you. All right. Oh, okay, yeah. very good. All right, <laughs> then it's not particularly a formal presentation. Um, if, if there is a question directed to you, let me uh, remind you to introduce yourself when you come up because uh, the people at home and then also for the record that lets us be sure who we are who is speaking to us all right then um, if uh, you want to start Pablos then for staff or for the applicant yeah um, I guess I'll ask you and if that's if something that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned that uh, assuming that the application uh, is accepted through us then they will go through the state for the to change the permit yes okay what's and that may be actually even a question for Suzanne. What happens in the hypothetical scenario where we approve it, but the state declines to expand, to uh, give them a permit for the expansion? 
just well, the conditional use is specific to them. So if they don't get approval from the state, they can't operate. Okay. And that I assume also that, that conditional use applies to this operator if a different operator takes over or they sell the operations. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, actually, the conditional uses are um, not specific to Mr. Graham, for instance. Okay. Um, if he um, chose to sell his business to another daycare operator, um, they could come in under the same conditional use permit, but they would have to abide by those the 101, the, the square footage, the age ranges, and they would have to they would have to have a license, and they'd have to comply with all those things, um, and that's if. You know, that's if less than, I think it's six months, or there's there's some criteria in the code when a conditional use actually gets abandoned. So, and that's actually how he, he acquired this use back um, in 1998 that way, so. Yeah. And at some point, uh, doesn't have to be necessarily now, I, I, w I would like to hear from the applicant about um, a little bit about the history of the operation of the daycare and in particular if they are on the record any um, if there have been any complaints ever from neighbors or if there have ever been any complaints against the daycare operation so like I said it doesn't have to be this instance sure. um, well let's let's wait a minute and see if there's any other questions okay. for Jan no. uh, from the commission no more questions for me I don't see any more questions all right then okay. thank you Jan okay. Then maybe uh, we'll just go ahead for in, uh, one of the, uh, I guess the daycare operator yeah. perhaps, uh, for our inquisitive commissioner on the end. <laughs> I'm late, but I did do my homework. <laughs> yes. yeah. And I, I apologize, just... traffic was. Uh... <laughs> okay, very good. All right, if you do you want to wait a moment. Uh, if you'd like to go go ahead and introduce yourself, then sure. we'll hear from uh, Pablo's first and then Steve. My name is Doug Graham. I'm the owner and director of Graham's Creative Kids Learning Center at 5950 South Platte Canyon Road in Littleton. Yeah. Uh, I think if you can give us just, I mean, it's not sort of a specific question, but I'd like to hear a little bit more about the history of the center under your operation and in particular I want to know you know have you received any awards any compliments have there been any complaints have there been any issues um, with the current operation so that again also for people who are listening in they have a little bit better idea well if at any time in the future you would need parent um, con comments I'd be more than happy to get that for you mm -hmm. um, I have some very high uh, a very high confidence rating, I think, from my parents. Uh, but I, as far as awards with the community, no, I've never really sought out that or asked anyone to do that for me. And uh, any complaints in the area, I am unaware of anything. Uh, we are, um, as you saw, in the, right behind us in the southeast corner, there's a small, sub a small neighborhood mm -hmm. of homes, and I don't believe that there's ever been any issue. Um, we have children who like to throw things every now and then, but... Nothing has come close to them. We have a nice background of bushes and so forth that uh, would protect, I believe, any homes back there. Um, but as far as complaints, noises, no, I don't believe so. And we just operate Monday through Friday. Um, there was a small typo, I believe. Um, we are open at 6, but we do close at 6.30 um, in the evenings. But other than that, um, I don't believe that there have ever been any type of complaints. Um, so. Has there ever been any action by the state? Um, we have a very clean record. You can mm -hmm. go to the uh, Colorado Department of Human Services Child Care Division and, and go online or, or call them and find out. Um, but we have a, a very nice record. Thank you. That's all for me. Steve, did you? Uh, have my only question I have is uh, the ages of the children range from infancy through 12 years of age. Yes. Is the 12 years of age, is that uh, something that that has, was instituted by yourself or, or oh, by the state? Oh, that is actually a, a state um, We can go higher if we, if we applied, but we, we typically don't. The, ch the children by then are ready to move on and do their own thing. So um, basically yeah. uh, upon their 13th birthday, they're not allowed in the center. Okay. If it, if it went, if they chose to go over the 12 years old, would it then have to come back to us again? 
I believe that that would be a state um, uh, requirement or a state regulation that I would uh, have to fill out an application to take the children further. But it's also a condition of this use. Oh. So since he hasn't asked for it, he couldn't get it without coming to both. In the 12 years that I've been there, I have yet to see a need for that. Okay. Okay. Linda, anything? Yeah. Commissioners at this end? No? All right. Oh, Jan has something additional, perhaps? <laughs> Typo was pointed out to me, so I thought I'd better clarify it. In my staff report, I'd indicated that they would be occupying 1,710 square feet of building B, and it's 1,760. But the total square footage is correct in your conditions and in your resolution. <laughs> and that's and it's it's 1,760 here on the plan. So okay. And then the daycare hours of operations are going to be from 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m.? Yes. Sir. Is that correct? Okay. All right. Both items in the staff report, not actually on the uh, uh, amendment. And uh, the recommendations are in the ordinance. I looked on the second page. I had to go back and look. All right. Uh, I think that's it. We sometimes conjure up another question, but thank you very much. Um, this is a public hearing, and um, we had uh, no other names on the roster. Uh, Douglas was the only one that uh, had signed it, and uh, we'll send all of that back down to the um, staff. Uh, if there's anybody else here that would like to comment, I suspect not. So, commissioners, could I have a motion to close the public hearing? I move that we close the public hearing. Second. All right. And uh, having no, uh, that was Julio had the second on that. Um, I assume there's no further discussion. Let's vote on that. Um, oh, oh, on the closing the on closing the public yes, hearing. And. Remembering that uh, Commissioner Metcalf is absent, Commissioner Ranville is uh, filling in. All right, thank you. And now, Commissioners, uh, would someone like to make a motion on this ordinance? Now, what do I want to say? I'd like to move that the Planning Commission there we are. Resolution, resolution number thank 1101 you for Graham Creative Kids Learning Center at 5950 South Platte Canyon Road be approved. I'll say and that. I question the comment that it doesn't say subject to the con three conditions. Is that something that would be requested or required in this motion? It, well, it's in the resolution. It's, it's, I understand that. I read that. But I, when I didn't see it in the uh, recommendation of approval by the staff, I was kind of yeah, I think it should be in the motion, if you want to just add it in. That's what I was going to do. Yeah, that'd be good. Say subject to the three conditions right. as uh, presented in the staff recommendations. All right. Second. And Steve, Steve Bockenstead has the second on that. Very good. Uh, any discussion? Presuming there probably is some. Any? No? Everybody seems pretty agreeable. Uh, I guess I'll just editorialize briefly and say I think this is a good location for this operation. There's probably a discernible limit to the size of it, but uh, um, I think the lack of uh, concern is uh, probably related to the, the agreeable location, and the uh, uh, commissioners are known to <laughs> be pretty critical about these things. So. Oh, one comment as well. Julio, yes. I, I just would like to see that you come back before 22 years. <laughs> <laughs> for, for your, another for your <laughs> next expansion, certainly. <laughs> There's a few vacant spaces around town. All right. Uh, well, then, commissioners, if we're ready to vote. I think we've got it all. All right. Looks like unanimous. We've moved through that rather quickly, and again, noting that Commissioner Ranville is filling in, even though the board says Metcalf. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.
And thank you, staff. That uh, yeah. was well prepared. All right. Um, there are some reports, staff and liaison, although our liaison to the HP board is not here tonight, Craig Coronado. So staff reports. We don't have anything. <laughs> don't have any? Okay. Give me just a moment. Here's the uh, roster from the public hearing. Um, the rest of the uh, items for today. Yeah, he's got them all. No staff report. I understand there was not a historic preservation board meeting. There was a design guideline meeting. Um, and uh, we'll defer that unless the, any of the commissioners wanted to offer something. We have a study session scheduled. So if we have a motion to adjourn to our special study session. So moved. Uh, first, I just want to say thanks to the crews that are out there keeping the roads clean <laughs> and freezing their butts off so no one of us gets stuck in any corners. So I just want to appreciate that and then I move that we adjourn. All right. I'll take Pablos is the, or I mean, uh, how about Julio moving and Pablos is a second okay. to adjourn. All those in favor, we'll make it formal. And it is unanimous. All right. This is a special study session to continue with the uh, comprehensive plan for the downtown area. Uh, Littleton Planning Commission, January 10th, 2011. And I believe we've got a PowerPoint presentation. We is do. that correct to start with? It will just actually lead us through. It's just a, it's our cheat sheet to kind of lead us through the discussion. So we're not. Oh, very good. It's a le much less of a presentation, much more of a discussion. Okay. Um, we had questions that, that arose as we were going through the, the comments that you gave us on the, uh, the first and second draft of the, of the comprehensive plan for downtown. And we wanted to go through those and just you know, kind of get some additional discussion and questions. Yeah, Julio. I don't know. Things seem to be kind of quiet for me, and I, I'm having trouble hearing. Okay, you want to speak up? So uh, if, if everybody wouldn't mind speaking up a little bit. Okay, I'm not quite sure what's going on with my hearing. Okay. But. We will, I will speak. Let me know if, if you can't hear me. Because okay, it's probably tr the same at home as well. Um, Linda? Yeah. Before we get into the questions, can we talk a little bit about the agenda for the study session sure. and what we're going to cover? Sure. Okay. What we wanted to do was go, go through these questions, um, thinking about this is going to help us kind of finalize the draft. We're really hoping that we can get as close as possible. Um, and again, what we're looking for is, is the content with the idea that we'll go back and do a, a final edit and actually hire an editor to help us at the final draft to kind of consolidate and conserve uh, our resources. Um, but we really appreciate the comments. I didn't get comments from everybody on the second draft yet. Um, and so if I haven't gotten them from you, I'd appreciate getting them uh, in the next in a couple of days if that's possible, if, if you have comments. Um, I know everybody's schedule has been really hectic over the holidays, so I, I appreciate uh, you're working on that and, and uh, apologize for the timing on it. Um, but we did uh, end up with some questions, so we want to go through and, and resolve those, and then we'll go take those back, and work on the final draft, get it out for the next meeting. So we have what we hope will be a final draft that uh, will go okay, forward. And as, as always, we know that we won't get 100% agreement on all the, all the elements, um, but we hope to at least have something that everybody feels um, it, represents, I think, the comments have been made, the discussion, and the intent of the, of the Planning Commission and to go forward with the downtown area. Um, so I know it takes a lot of work to go through this, so I really appreciate it. But we did have some things we really wanted to talk about, um, some key things that we thought you know, we needed to address, and those include sustainability. Um, Jenny brought it up before, and we've had that discussion before, but uh, we wanted to make sure that we've, we've got the language as, as it works as well as possible. Housing is, is an ongoing question in terms of uh, how much housing do you want to support for downtown? Are there ways to do that? Do you want to encourage it? Um, is there some way to do that that makes sense? 
uh, how important is housing for downtown. Third is the circulation network, just in terms of really clarifying uh, some, some concepts that have come up and what does that mean. Uh, fourth is we've actually talked about having a separate park section. Uh, we had included that into the land use and uh, section before, and do we want to pull that out? Having read through that a couple times, does it make sense the way it is, or do you want to pull it out? Um, the fourth is kind of starting to look at the graphics uh, for the plan itself. We have what we call associative images, and the thought is that with those associative images, you're bringing in images from other places that you're saying this is kind of what we're talking about. Um, we will also have graphics, of course, from here that really represent you know, what we see as uh, the key elements from downtown, but we'll try and identify and separate those. So the, uh, but we want to talk about that a little bit more. And then there was a discussion about the city collaborating with merchants and property owners for economic development um, uh, policies and, and goals for downtown. And, and what's that really mean and how, how much uh, do you support that? And are there any questions about that? So those were the, the questions, but we wanted to get into more detail and just see um, how, how we can follow that. So the, the goal, again, is we want to try and get before um, uh, the public for a public hearing, before planning commission, uh, and, and to City Council before uh, the end of March, if we can. Uh, we are losing three members that, we, that we're aware of, um, and so we want to see if we can have that, retain that continuity, that uh, the brain power that we have, and all the work you put into this, we make sure we get as far along here as we can. Um, can I, a, yeah. If you don't mind going back one. Okay. The only reason why I'm saying that is because, and, and pardon me for bringing this up. Sure. I w when I was looking at your list, um, the two, maybe even three, that I thought that we could probably talk about and hopefully come to some conclusion on quicker, sustainability is one thing that I just really find we could talk about that for a long time. Okay. And, and with all due respect, I was really thinking, you know, the priority I was looking at is looking at the housing, mm -hmm. because that's a fixed known quantity mm -hmm. uh, that we could either, you know, it's kind of more on the black and white side of things. Mm -hmm. Same thing is true with the circulation network, and I also feel the same about the parks section. Okay. The others, I think, are a little bit more, a little bit more vague in my mind. Okay. And I think it's going to be diff more difficult to put our arms around them. So if we start off with housing? Well, that's just my thought. Okay. I just wanted to bring it up. I don't want to, you know, put my foot into it. But if everybody wants to go with sustainability, that's cool. It's just that I just think it's tougher to talk about that in my, in my mind. And it takes, eats up a lot of time. And I just assume get rid of some of the uh, ones I think might be easier to discuss. I don't see any big objection, commissioners. Shall we just take it? Take the three okay. Julio proposes. As long as we have some time to talk about sustainability. Sure. I'm hoping that <laughs> so. we won't take any more than about yeah. the, as long as, minutes. As long as we get that. to it and it doesn't, yeah. at the very end, we have five minutes left. No, to, I don't, that's so. not fair, no. <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll reserve at least the last half an hour. How's that? All right. Um, let's, let's move through it then. Housing, is that good work for you? All right. Very good. Okay. Um, and Sergey can help me out with this as well. She's... Uh, been real uh, important for this discussion as we've gone through. We've had comments in terms of uh, what we've got in terms of goals and policies in the plan for housing and encouraging housing. I don't think we've ever really had you know, a real clear sense in terms of how much support is there for how much housing. Um, I think we've always talked about a diversity of housing, but is there general support for encouraging housing, additional housing in the downtown area? Um, and then what options do we have for encouraging housing if, if that's the way the Commission wants to go? And um, we've talked, you know, kind of generally about that. We've, we've talked specifically about, you know, some of the examples we've had, some of the comments we've gotten. Um, comments, for example, from downtown retailers um, after election, you know, got to the point where it was really significantly occupied. Um, I got a comment from one of the downtown retailers that he definitely could, could notice. Um, that influx of folks, those 350 units were making a difference already in terms of people on the street. Um, and maybe they're not shopping in his store every day, but it's making a difference to him. And he said he could see that there was more activity uh, with those units. Um, and I think I mentioned to you before, uh, one of my neighbors um, has a chain of, of taverns um, throughout the metropolitan area. And, and I asked him why he didn't come to downtown Littleton. And he said, 
to my surprise, it's, you know, to some degree, he was very familiar with downtown Littleton, really loved downtown Littleton, and wants to be here. But he comes on a regular basis, and he says, to date, there aren't enough people on a regular basis, you know, walking the streets. There's just not enough activity. Right? So if there's something going on at town hall, if there's something else happening in town, then you yeah, have a lot of activity. But he wants something that comes in. And his feeling was, we, again, we needed more housing. So, so we get that sense, and I think we heard that in the interviews and in the focus groups as well. Um, but it does have implications in terms of that means redevelopment, that means sites, what times of, of redevelopment housing do we have. And we've had those kind of discussions. Uh, Julio? Yeah. I guess, you know, I, I too recall what you're, what you're re referring to. But I guess I would look at this, this plan here that shows virtually everything from the red to the tan has housing in it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have been prescribing since the get-go. And that being stated, I guess unless uh, you get another Nevada place, you know, or something similar to that, um, I guess I would look for more uh, housing hmm. to come from the exterior part of the downtown neighborhood and not just think of this is the edge of the world and there's nothing else beyond that. I, so I guess I, I have a, you know, a mixed bag of responses to that, to that comment. I, I truly agree that the, the newer developments have helped because they're right in the neighborhood. I'm, I'm still waiting for Nevada Place to come totally online and that all will, will also help. I, unless you really do think of a policy statement that says we're looking and interested in redevelopment, to the best of my knowledge, I'm not so sure we, you have heard that from this group or from a lot that's, of other folks. That's why we thought it was important to come back and say, because that's what that means. If you're going to get more housing, you know, we have some vacant lots, but at some point there's going to be some redevelopment. So we will, and to get another development at the scale of election, well, I would say impossible at this point. So we're going to see smaller, smaller things just given you know, the, the nature of what we have in terms of ownerships, in terms of parcels, in terms of parcels that are redevelopable. Yeah. Well, this red area that, that's down below mm -hmm. is prime area for that kind of redevelopment. Mm -hmm. For a larger scale, yeah. Isn't yeah. there already a, an approved development on Ramp Street? That's correct. That's where Littleton Lofts is, right? How many units was that, do you recall? I think it's 52. Yeah, I was right. going to say closer to 60. So, yeah, so there are. That's probably the high end of what we would see as mm -hmm. as it gets redeveloped in the country. Right, sure, is in terms of scale uh, and density. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. so um, Dennis, if you could, if we could get back to the other thing, there, there's a yeah, Doug, there's a little bit, a little bit the... of a backstory that we Good, wanted to go over here. Yeah, and and I guess just in terms of housing um, as a planning element, and I'll be very quick with this because some of you know know it quite well. Nationally and in the, in the cities that I work in, in the West here, most downtowns are looking for housing because they think that it will give them that, <clears throat> that you know, longer um, day than just and into the evening kind of activity that they're looking for. They're looking for housing because when it's somebody's neighborhood, people care about it a lot more. And they're looking for housing because it's a lever that if you pull that lever, so several other things happen, like all of a sudden, you know, uh, the neighbors are making sure that, that crime is kept low. They're, um, it, it looks uh, like uh, you have a population for the parks and, and the area. So almost every city that I've ever worked in is looking for housing, and they're looking for housing now. I'll relate this to Littleton because I know you guys have good housing, but let me just get through this. Close-in housing, as, as you've talked about, is also very important, and, and they're looking for linkages, and one of the things that we've been doing is looking for getting the linkages from the east and, and the south to come in. So I think that that'll be very helpful. Critical mass. Um, I had a, a couple of discussions with some colleagues across the country recently, and there's, a, there's some magical numbers. And one of them is, you know, when do you really have a neighborhood as opposed to a collection of houses? And um, one, of the, one of the things that they talk about is, you know, well, how close are those houses to each other? Because that's going to make a difference. But another thing that they talk about is if you can get somewhere between 700 
uh, I'm sorry, 800 and 1,000 units, then you, can get, you will be able to support a pretty good uh, broad range convenience store. And once you get to that level, then you start to kind of have a neighborhood because people don't have to go out of the neighborhood all the time to get whatever that they need, and it starts to become a place. Um, I had posed the question to them about a grocery store because I knew you were all interested in that. Um, the discussion went, well, if you have, if you have about three to 4,000 housing units, then you might get a grocery store. And then several people said, one of the things that you have to realize is that the way that Americans shop is they get in their car, they go to a place that has stuff that is not very expensive, they load their car up and they come back. So uh, the, the, I, the notion that you would walk to the grocery store and come home with your bags is often more of a notion than a reality. And, and so that's why you're not seeing the, um, the grocery store owners flocking into uh, towns that have less of that population in terms of rooftops. Um, they, there are some exceptions. There are, you know, people who have come from the neighborhood and they want to establish a, their local grocery store and, and they like it and they, they have the personality for it and the funds to do it. But in general, it's, it's difficult to do. Um, another one offered the idea that, you know, even if you don't have a grocery store, if you have that convenience store, you have something. And so I guess my message is that we're looking at somewhere between 800 and 1,000 what they call rooftops to really coalesce a neighborhood. And right now we're a little bit above 500, I believe, 530, something like that. So um, the, the, the housing acts as a catalyst for lots of other things that you want to have happen. Um, and then you say, well, how do you um, – how, how do you suggest or make that happen? Well, one way is you do nothing, and whoever comes in and wants a, a house to put in housing, they do it like they have traditionally here in Littleton, and if it happens, it happens, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. And, and you know, you, you just kind of wait. Another way is to be much more proactive. Other cities have taken actions that I suspect would not play well in Littleton. For example, um, given an addition, if, if you develop your property as housing, you can have an additional floor or additional height so that you can, uh, so that it's attractive to do because so often um, office on a per square foot basis is, is a more attractive development option. Um, you can lower the parking requirement. But you, you know, we were looking at the parking requirement, you have two cars for a single family and I think one and a half per unit for multifamily. That's, you know, if you start lowering it, you have to say, well, you know, how do people really get around here? It, they, they do need a place for cars and if you don't want those cars on the street, I'm not sure you want to do that. Um, process and time reduction. Time is money to a developer. So some cities have figured out a way to shrink the time if you're, if you're doing housing, if you're coming in for housing development so that you can you, you you get almost an ombudsman to get you through the system. Um, that may or may not work here. We really haven't determined that. Parks, sidewalks, public art, and amenities. In other words, creating the the land use generally so that it's attractive for families and people to live and, and as a neighborhood. Putting schools in is another thing that that other places have done. And there's a variety of other things to do. So. I, I guess what I'm thinking is that, you know, you're lucky in the sense that you have some very nice housing stock, you have some new housing stock, some traditional housing stock, and the, and the question really that we had for you because we hadn't discussed this is, is this something you want to push or is it something that you want to continue to, to, to go down the road that you're going down where sometimes someone will come in and they'll have development. You'll look at it. You'll see if you like it. If you like it, you approve it. If it fits within all of the criteria. Well, just to kind of respond to some degree, it's one of the reasons why I was so kind of adamant about this red area mm -hmm. being extended further down because that, in my mind, allows for not only the residential portion, but also for the retail hmm? kind of to kind of take a hold. And granted, we're not there today, and we're not probably going to be there tomorrow. Right. But the concept is to create the incentives 
so that somebody looking at the city of Littleton would be able to look at this plan and, and based upon the comments that are generated below it, it would respond to what they're trying to find. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't know, even by doing all of this, if that would really truly categorize the 800 rooftops that you're talking about. However, you know, and that's, that's another day as far as I'm concerned because, but I think that for the incentive for the future, I truly believe this is the one aspect that we have been looking at and have been trying to consider, at least from my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think that, you know, in the tan areas, in the, in the darker tan areas, I should say, there has been a number of uh, requests over the course of time that have actually been approved and have not moved forward for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that we have certainly haven't closed any doors in that regard. And that's why I'm thinking that the housing issue, in my mind, is not as strong as a uh, negative as, as than what's really truly there. I really think that we have gone out and said, yes, we're looking for housing, yes, we're looking, and you can do it in combination, you know, where, where the primary area may be, res may be more on the retail, but up above you can have residential. Right. We're saying that, um, not without owning the property personally and, and not going out and marketing it, that's about the best we can do. I mean, we are marketing it. We're telling folks and the public in general that that's what we're seeing, and that's why we're going to put that out there and see what kind of response we get from both the commercial and residential side. I, I do think it's an important aspect of it, absolutely, is, it, is by having that in the plan and saying this is what we're looking for, that that really tells property owners and developers that, you know, that's what the city has in mind, what planning commission has in mind. And so when they come forward, they feel comfortable that they're kind of on the right track, and then we respond accordingly. So, Jenny? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, good Jenny in here. Uh, when I look at, when we talk about the housing, some of it is basically talking about density and how, where, where are we putting, if we're, and I, I think it's good to think about housing happening in the future here in downtown Littleton because it talks about that walkability. I mean, you have a lot of nice um, components with the community college. I mean, you've got a lot of the light rail. There's a lot in Main Street with the businesses. There's a lot set up here that people would want, I would think, would want to, uh, to live here. And so when I think about density, the old downtown neighborhood, I think low density. We already have a lot of single families neighborhood that is developed and it's intact. Um, when you start to get to the residential mixed use di district, that's more of a, a, a like a mid range density. And then the red I see is more of a, that's the highest density in the sense of, and I think we've already started to talk too about with the heights of our, um, and that, that lends itself to being the greater densities for the height um, that we're looking at is really in the red zone area. And so when I think about the density and the concentration that we would be encouraging residential to happen, um, I think that would be an important component to talk about in the comp plan. And as far as um, encouraging, like adding additional story, I guess some of the things that I would think of is that if someone has a, if they're planting a garden on their roof or they're doing something, um, that that might, some green uh, saving energy and some of these other components that maybe there are some incentives out there, not just incentives for um, housing itself, <laughs> but incentives to do more um, green technology and things to encourage and also green roof. I mean just having a roof garden is a really beautiful amenity to have You have more of that happening. It starts to activate your rooftops and the city just comes more alive so I think some of those design things um, as well as just the encouraging balconies and it, where you, you see people um, being able to get outdoors and there's that dynamic of people on the street being able to see people um, living and um, there's activity. So I think those pieces, when I think of what is going to make our city more alive and um, our components as well in the housing. Let me weigh in for just a moment and then any other commissioners. Um, your question was more, my answer would be not a whole lot more. I think that's what we heard because I think a lot more housing is going to change the character of the downtown area. 
Um, and there seemed to be a lot of input that said we like the character downtown, the uh, uh, single family, older R5 area. Those residents and uh, uh, owners didn't seem to want to do a lot different. Um, I would also state, thinking back, there was some housing where Echo Star is now at one time. Um, it was affordable housing, some of it. And the city uh, view was that this would be a great place for retail, for those of you that don't perhaps remember. Um, that didn't work very well, and now it's Echo Star. It could, the city vision could have been, boy, this would be a great place for uh, 15 seven-story, you know, uh, apartment, you know, ranging from affordable to luxury. That wasn't the view then. There was a view that didn't work. I think uh, in my own perspective, and I'd like to hear if I'm off base from the other commissioners, my answer to more is not a whole lot more. Norm, I guess the question to follow up on that is, um, do you feel like the zoning that we have in place and the height uh, limits we're talking about, um, does that kind of achieve your goal in terms of, I, I uh, think, given the nature of, of, yes, of, of the that, properties that we have and you know, how few we actually have that are open currently for developments? What's approved now uh, and these height limits, to me, uh, fit in with what we've heard from residents and from business owners. Of course, business owners would love to have the queue outside the door every morning and every evening when they unfortunately have to close. Uh, that also would affect the, uh, uh, the character of downtown, and there's simply not going to be the parking downtown to accommodate that. I think the co connectivity to the neighborhoods, particularly east, um, would give better access and somehow to entice the people off of light rail. There's a lot of people without any additional vehicles that are available. There's a lot of students that come and go and a huge amount of parking at ACC. Um, those are reservoirs to tap rather than uh, a lot more housing. That's my understanding of what we've heard and I'd, I'd love to hear Pablo's. Come on, tell me where I'm wrong. <laughs> no, I, I um, probably am. <laughs> I think, and to some extent, I'll echo um, comments that Jenny made. The question of more housing is, in by itself, meaningless. What kind of housing? Um, where? What kind of density? Um, downtown, the downtown area is not unified. So um, I think really looking at it, um, I do agree with, uh, with Hulu to some extent that maybe areas that we need to look at um, for additional housing are not necessarily within um, the study area. We started out that study area with recognizing areas of influence um, around it. Um, I think the issue of connectivity, not just within downtown, but also with the outside areas, uh, is particularly important, and things can't develop quite in isolation. The downtown area is geographically small, and unless we are willing to deal with significantly higher densities than we have right now, which is not at all what we've heard um, from most people, then I think if we're looking at the so-called 800 to 1,000 rooftop neighborhood number that was given, um, we need to look at a slightly larger area. Um, and definitely the, the newer developments over Prince Street um, on the northeast, the northwest part of uh, the downtown area outside is we, we see some development there and we see a lot of housing there. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the old sheriff's area being developed quite possibly into housing. So we need to look at a little bit of that. Um, but I would really question what we want. What we heard a lot from the uh, old downtown neighborhood neighbors is, if anything, reduce the allowable density um, considerably. So. If we're going to do that, then we're going to have to really pack it in some other areas. So, Steve or Linda, Kurt, any 
any answer to the question? Just to, I think, chime in with everyone else. I believe the framework is is a good start with what we have. The uh, the height limits. I think those are good. We already have projects on the drawing board that may come on. We've seen this natural progression. I think the the sheriff's site, Steve Anderson's site. I think that in the coming years will be redeveloped as housing right on the edge of uh, the area we're talking about. I think there will be more housing, and I think it will grow fairly naturally, and I think we have a good framework to, to uh, give ideas going forward. From what, from what I was uh, understanding from our uh, uh, meetings that we've had was, uh, was along the lines of what Norm was saying, where uh, um, that somewhat more in density but not much more um, and another uh, another question I had is go back to that uh, um, height limit paper you had that's not the s oops that one on the floor <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man he's good <laughs> those aren't the same height limits that we had voted on in the past is it yes uh -huh. yeah I think those, those are. one that uh, dick revised we had um, we came down in these areas. We were higher originally, the mm -hmm. original proposal, and these were about 10 feet lower than, than what we looked at initially. So these, my understanding is these, these are the lowest. Uh, right. So that's the same. I think he's correct. Yeah, that's where we ended up. That was a reduction from what uh, they brought forward. And mm -hmm. ju just as a point of clarification, I we aren't suggesting that you know if you want more housing, you have to go beyond these bounds. Okay. Right. We're not, I mean, it's part of the character of downtown Littleton is its size. Mm -hmm. And um, we, uh, we get that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Um, does okay. that give you enough answer about housing? Yes. Anything, anything else in terms of, so I guess w let me just reiterate what we're hearing, I think, and that <laughs> is that you're happy with the tools we have and the recommendations we're making. Uh, you think there's a natural progression and that we'll get housing that, that is appropriate and consistent. Um, we do not need to put in place uh, any mechanisms for actually encouraging additional housing or additional density. Is that how well, we're hearing? I would agree. However, there is a, I, I guess, a theme that I'm really hoping that, that you can lock in on that I really felt that was kind of missing when I was reading some of this. And that is you've, you've done a great job of showing where we are today. But I want to show what the future is all about. So we need to go to that next step. What does this plan show for the next steps of the future? And I think you've touched upon it with the housing element, you know, just by the discussion tonight. Becky, we're keeping you busy. Thank you. And I think that's really appropriate, you know, as a result of saying that. But I think it needs to be so stated in the document so that people understand that there's more to than us looking at this and doing a, a snapshot of the way it is today. Right. But there's a lot more that we're really looking for. And the only other element is either, and, and this is one question I don't have, and it even goes beyond your list, that I don't think we can discuss tonight, but, you know, one of the main requests that we, I remember us getting is this has to show an ability or a, a methodology of making decisions mm -hmm within this area. And I was looking at it from that point of view, and I think that there's uh, some areas that I think we could arguably go back and forth on a little bit, and I'd like to see those crystallized a little bit as well. And if this is, you know, housing may be just one element of that, but, you know, and, and like insofar as parks and things of that sort and circulation, I really find it difficult. You're not going to put more roads where you know, for the sake of roads, we don't have a new freeway coming through or we don't have, we're not going to make them necessarily smaller, you know, in context because we've already agreed that we want to keep it the way it is, you know. So for, for us looking at it at this point in time, that may be an issue. That's where we are today. That may be an issue for the future. Mm -hmm. And I think we kind of need to say we've gone this far in this area and, you know, we're willing to, we may be not willing to compromise on all of this, but there are certain things we might be willing to compromise. Okay. Let's go to circulation network then. Are there 
Another easy one. Specific, specific questions yeah. for us about yeah. that. If we can go back, Doug, to the. I, yeah. I promised Jenny we'd have time. No, I can. I'm, I'm looking at the clock too. Even if we don't get through your three, I don't eat a your three easy one. <laughs> Can I make one suggestion with the uh, future conditions? Uh, to me, it would be helpful to see it just stated point blank, um, you know, rather than incorporating it into the text, like have either a separate section or something that clearly delineates, here's what we see for the future. And that will be I don't, clear. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. I'm not sure where or how. We love idea. adding. We have talked yeah. about. We add it in and then it's like, oh my God, it's too long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can help you out on that because I think that to some degree, you've done it without really so stating it. Yeah. Your introduction, your, you know, framework, existing condition, districts, et cetera, to me, that's all of where we are today. But where you really get into what I think of the today and the future is when you start talking about the the planning principles and the goals and the policies. And maybe there you can reflect that, mm -hmm. you know, with even a, a heading sure. that says future town, uh, <laughs> downtown planning principles, something along those lines. Yeah. So somebody gets a forward way of thinking on this thing. Okay. Good idea. We have talked about an implementation section I think it would tie it into so it's not so much of what we see as much as what we'd like to see and tie it into implementation that's how we would get there right. uh, on circulation we had talked about the concept of complete streets and complete streets and Sarah Jane can help me with this as well um, is a street that actually accommodates everybody kind of equally in terms of uh, pedestrians and bicyclists and vehicles um, it's a very comfortable environment, and it's built that way. And I think, if I understand you know, from what Sarah Jane was saying particularly, that it seems to be most appropriate in, in new development because you can really go in and plan for that, whereas in existing development, it's very difficult to go back and retrofit because we've got limitations in terms of the right-of-way and in terms of existing structures. And so we really have to kind of retrofit you know, a little bit in terms of how do we actually m meet those goals of complete streets with the conditions that we have and make those to the best we can. And that seems like we're, where we've been talking about it in terms of how do we accommodate and how do we treat uh, different types of, of transportation. Um, we had talked about not letting vehicles dominate the environment as, as possibly a way to get there, um, that it is a more equal treatment. Um, but setting a, a policy that may be important at some point if we ever were to get a question about you know traffic uh, volume has, has increased to such a degree on a particular street how do we accommodate that well it, there's always the option of widening that right away widening that street um, but if we have a strong statement in there in terms of not letting vehicles dominate the environment that starts talking about well how, how do we respond and still you know, respect those other you know, modes of transportation, how do we respect the pedestrian net network, how do we respect bicyclists, uh, how do we you know, ha actually try and balance those to some degree. Um, it gets into, I think there are just a lot of questions that come up where it's important to have some kind of direction from the plan as to how do we treat it. And we're hoping to keep it as open as possible. Yeah, Lou? I, I'm not trying to dominate really, but when you get into the circulation and if, if our concept is to keep the downtown in its own character, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to reduce the speeds right. so people coming through. So you're not going to have a 45 mile an hour posted through downtown Main Street. Right. So, you know, we're really trying to say that we want to see this area at, you know, maybe maximum 30 and, and even that may be over the top. could be 25. Maybe for all I know, it could be 15. I mean, there are places in downtown areas that I have seen that they mark it, that literally mark the, the land as saying, you can't go any faster than 15, and cops are all over the place, and they'll give you nice big fines if you go a, one mile over that. And what that does, it, it, you know, you only have to get buzzed once or twice, and you kind of get the idea. And you'll crawl through that place, and good, bad, or indifferent. Now, I think there's, one of the things I'm alluding to as I say this is, and as much as I'm not crazy about using the term encourage, I guess I would like to rather say that we really need to have a circulation plan that covers a lot of the principles and elements that we have talked about 
that are, you know, that we have requested, that's what needs to be in here, what we have requested, and then that has to be the basis of a circulation plan for the downtown. L let me tell you what I, what, what we have talked about before and, and what you see in the plan reflects that. And then when we, when we got some comments back, they were like, whoa, I'm not sure we want to go there. So I just want to make sure that, that I've heard the right stuff because it's going to be your plan and it's going to be, you know, what you all think. Um, first, I, I guess I'm not confused that most pedestrians in downtown Littleton are pedestrians because they found a parking space for the most part. So I don't think that that either Dennis or I are are saying, gee, wouldn't it be great if there were no cars in downtown Littleton? I mean, we're not quite that naive. Um, I think that uh, having said that, and we, we have a few slides later on to show you what we mean by dominating the street. We don't want the bicyclists, pedestrians, um, to feel second class to the vehicles. And we, we have put together a few, <clears throat> a few examples of that and how it works. And I think you're exactly right, Julio, how that works is everybody's driving slowly, they've got their eyes open, they're, they're not, the, the person in the vehicle, and this would include transit vehicles, um, they're, they're not number one and everybody else is secondary. So that's, that's one principle. Secondly, that um, to the degree possible, we would, we would try to reduce the impediments to bicycling and walking that are out there by making sure that the sidewalks connect, that there's, there's uh, safe places for bicycles and that we divide the bicycles into two groups. Um, those that, that, you know, you don't want your children necessarily out on Prince Street. Um, and, and you want to make sure that those people who really do like to use their bicycles for transportation and they know how to do that can ride safely within the streets. So the, those, that's kind of the, the background of what we're looking at. And, we, and, and I think we're going to have to come up with some images. And, and I just have a few to show you. I, these are not necessarily the ones I'm suggesting. Um, there's lots of places where lots of cars go by, lots more than in, on Main Street, and yet, it, the, in my opinion, you feel a certain um, sense of security and safety in the places that are for pedestrians. One of, the, one of those is um, shown in the upper left-hand corner. That's in Santa Monica, California. And what you see there is you have an, almost an outdoor room as part of the sidewalk, there are cars going actually pretty fast there, and, and yet the cars are not dominating the environment. Um, some of the angles here, you know, you might, you, you could criticize and say, well, you're taking it from the sidewalk point of view, but that's kind of my point. The, the second, uh, the middle one is a residential area where there's cars along, parked along the street, and it's a two, one, one lane in each direction. And again, there's a safe pedestrian place there and you don't feel overwhelmed by those cars. Um, upper right, you can see the same kind of thing. It's almost like a living room. Lower left is in Seattle, um, some new housing there. Again, you, you're not overwhelmed by the cars. And then 17th Street, we know that that often has a lot more uh, traffic than you see in that picture. But I think it's a place where you do, again, feel like the cars are not dominating. If we can go to the next slide, Dennis. On the left. If you would, just for a second, before we go too far afield, Linda, you were going to weigh in. Well, I was just going to say that don't let, it, uh, letting, or don't let the vehicles dominate the environment is completely misleading to the points that you're trying to make. So there, maybe there's a different way yeah. to write the language to specifically, you know, reduce those impediments to bicycling and to make those points that you want to make. I think that language is just kind of misleading. Okay. I, I think I've got a couple suggestions later, too. Could Pablo's um, a comment briefly, then we'll go back to the yeah. images. Sorry, Sarah. That's all right. Can we go back to the questions for the commission? Please, thank you. Okay. Uh, no, the best circulation network. And just one more. Okay, no. perfect. Um, so I want to address those uh, specifically. I like the complete streets 
proposal because it gives a direction. I'd like it, I'd, I would personally propose that we adopt the complete streets uh, policy for the downtown area, but we add some kind of a qualifier uh, recognizing that we're not asking for a complete retrofit, um, but that we base it upon on the principles. One of the things that we saw, for example, even in just the application that we had before us during the regular meeting, is that any application that comes out has a regular um, request for traffic study. I think that if we have a complete streets policy in that area, we can easily ask for applicants not simply how many more cars will you have there, but how will you accommodate circulation as a whole. Uh, because right now, even the applicants are coming in and they're simply addressing traffic, meaning vehicular traffic. They're not addressing circulation in a more complete fashion. So I'd like to see that. Uh, that's my particular um, view. Let me interject. I was going to suggest a statement, consider complete streets as a desirable model where possible, something like that in the comprehensive plan. It doesn't dictate, but it indicates to a developer that uh, take some elements out of that, look at it, and you're more likely to get a favorable recommendation. Okay. And I honestly think that we haven't really vetted the complete streets to make that kind of assessment at this point. Uh, you know, yeah, it would be nice to include it in, but we haven't really talked about it. And uh, I agreed, which is why I thought, you know, where possible, whatever element somebody brought in then would be considered much as Paulos was saying, we consider traffic and vehicles and so on. Um, what? Go ahead, Julio briefly, then we'll get back to Sarah Jane before she loses. <laughs> the only thing I want to say is that if you're going to create vehicles, not letting vehicles dominate the environment, I grew up in California. Anybody that put their foot off of the curb, every car stopped. Yeah, it's amazing. You want to make something like that here where you can equalize the playing field, you're going to have to create more than policies yeah. for this particular area that says, just like the sign says, you know, where it says this is a law, a, you know, it's a state law, pedestrians have the right of way. Well, my comment is real simple. If you want to really deal with this, get some of the traffic cops out there. When I think I, and, my and understanding that's part of is it. that the, the state law here is, is different enough from California is that, that the rule is, as interpreted by the police departments um, and by public services, is that you pedestrian has the right of way but has to wait for a break in traffic. So once yes. you have a break in traffic, then you can step out. But if you step out like you do in California, you don't have the right of way as pedestrian. They do because they've got the flow. So if I was a yeah, police officer, so I, think I would say a the same thing. there in the state laws, if I understand. But I guess my comment is, is it's, you know, it's directed upon interpretation. Let's get real here. In California, I, you know, I, I grew up there, you know, in the 60s and the 50s, and it's still true. It didn't make any difference if you were a kid, an adult, or a senior. You put your foot out in that, in that crossway, man, you were, people stopped. And you can call it whatever you want, and, and, there's no reason why you couldn't do something like that in the downtown area so that it, ca it creates a level playing field for anybody and everybody that's trying to get across the street or get downtown or whatever. But until you do that, nothing's going to really happen because there's no respect. for the for Our culture has been allowed to kind of go the way of the cars. But that's not going to be an item in the comprehensive plan, probably. Know. Uh, can make that? <laughs> you can, that's my point is, you can make a motion or a policy that, because of the fact we want to see more in a historical way, want to see traffic slow down, and encourage pedestrian, bicyclists, and other forms of of movement to be equal and not dominated by the car. This is, would be some of the items that you could put in there as suggestions from the Planning Commission to the City of Littleton. Now, how they deal with it, it's up to them. On that, uh, on that level, perhaps, yeah. but, but uh, law enforcement, probably not. <laughs> um, 
one of the other things I was going to say is add comfortable connections for pedestrians and bicycles to adjacent neighborhoods um, as part of circulation. Your second item is pedestrians, bicycles, and vehicles. We've talked a lot about getting connected um, across Santa Fe and across the uh, uh, railroad depression. So I think a statement like that perhaps is helpful. I see some nodding in one person who just abandoned us. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, we're, can we can we get to the uh, parks? The the last I, of I the three. Even, I don't even care if we get to the parks. Okay. Let's get right into the uh, sustainability. Uh, Jimmy had a. Do we have another question or comment? Can I show you at least one oh, more? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I don't no, want to bring these back to Okay. <laughs> uh, I, um, actually, Mr. Chair, my understanding was that the agenda in the study session is that you had some questions for us to, to address. I am concerned that we won't have enough time if the agenda is a presentation, which personally I find interesting, but I think that we need to decide if we want to have a presentation um, by Sarah Jane or we want to proceed with, with the questions uh, and try to address them and move forward. I think we're getting some of your questions answered, sure. perhaps. Yeah, you bet. We're getting there. Yeah. Um, do you, I don't know what Sarah Jane still has. Um, I think one more slide. One more slide. Oh, this yeah. one and then one more. Do that, um, then we'll go to sustainability. And the is not for me to make a presentation, but I think it's hard to discuss some of this, these ideas if you don't have any pictures, that's sure. all. Um, so uh, 17th Street on, on your right is not as comfortable, and it's probably not as relevant. Let's just go to the next one here. On the left-hand side, that's the Champs-Élysées, which is in Paris. That's 10 lanes of moving traffic. That is one of the most pedestrian-friendly streets in the world. Yeah, so is. I don't think it's about traffic so much as how it's handled and how the sidewalk is handled. You'll notice there's two um, rows of trees on each side and, and wide sidewalks. And on the right-hand side, that's what it's like to be on that sidewalk. So I think it's a design issue. and and Julio thinks it's a, an enforcement issue, I would agree with that. Um, so that's what we mean by not dominating. I think there's one more slide there. Here's some areas that I think the cars are dominating the streets, okay? And that has to do with surface parking lots adjacent to the streets, curb cuts, um, those kinds of things. And so this falls not only into circulation, but it's gonna head into parking as well. And that's all I got. I've not been to Paris, but I, some of the slides brought to mind uh, along the uh, Thames in the <laughs> neighborhood of the uh, embankment in London. Um, I think there were four lanes, perhaps six there, and adjacent parks, but you had to quit talking when the traffic was flowing, and then it would, you know, either there would be a break in traffic or it would stop and you could talk. It did dominate it, although the spaces were very comfortable mm -hmm. <laughs> when the noise subsided, so. Well, and you can step in front of any car in Paris and they'll stop for you. Mm. I, yes, <laughs> it's not so long. They even things. close your eyes and just, you know. <laughs> Don't try that in Athens. <laughs> <laughs> yes, cultural differences. All right. Um, so let's, can we now move to sustainability, which I think, Pablo, these, they're, um, they're bringing forward their questions about these areas. And I think some of our comments hopefully are offering direction. Sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Sir Jane, you want to talk about a little bit, we ha had a discussion on September 27th on sustainability. Yeah. And, and, what, and what the direction that we got was that that's really a citywide issue and that we should mention it as part of what we're doing in downtown and that, we, um, and that we, we took from that that we were not going to do a sustainability section in downtown. We were going to refer to sustainability as in a very um, minor way and do it as a sustainability policy for the entire city. And to the extent possible, and kind of incorporate it throughout the plan as right. we went through. And so that's what we did. And, and if we want to change that, that's fine. I, I mean, I, as I said, it's your plan. We'll do whatever you want. But that's where we are now. And so I think the first question to you is, do we want, how do we want to do this downtown neighborhood and citywide? How, how do we handle that for you? Either Pablo or Jenny. <laughs> um, I, I don't have my notes with me. It's on a 
my older notebook, which I filled up on September 27th, so <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what was discussed. Uh, my concern about, I let's take a step back. I agree that sustainability is a citywide issue, not something that is specific or limited to the downtown. Uh, my concern, however, is that if we say, oh, it's citywide, so we're not going to talk about it till we do the citywide plan, which is scheduled for, let's see, never. Um, <laughs> it's it just not going to happen. I, I would like to see Go, sustainability goals in that section within the comp plan, specifically the downtown, and discuss that those are not, of course, explicit or specific only to that area. Um, when we very first started looking at the comp plan, we looked at citywide goals, um, and we actually left those aside, and I'm not a I can't even remember exactly why we did that. But since we're not looking at the citywide part of the comp plan and we're just looking at the downtown, I would like to see that explicitly um, stated there as its own section because otherwise it's just not going to exist. And it's a way in which we can continue um, on and make reference. Um, I'm okay if we want to, as part of this process, simply include a portion um, of the sustainability that applies citywide. But to just say, you know, it's not only for downtown, therefore we're not going to do it, uh, I think means we're just not going to do it. So specifically, I have some other comments, but on that <coughs> question as to do we include it in the citywide, that's what I wanted to add. How about some specific elements um, would you want to include solar access review solar access as a path to sustainability and that would translate up to citywide uh, consider the um, advantage in uh, rehabilitation of a historic structure as being a more sustainable path than demolition is that I mean, let's, let's try to give them some specifics, commissioners. I, I don't know if yeah. you guys are agreeing with what I've stated, but those are sort of more specific things that might go in a, in a particularly for downtown, the historic preservation. Well, I agree on that. I first, since the question was asked, you know, do we even include a sustainability uh, yes. section? You know, all that other stuff is going to be moot if, you know, if Jen and I are the only ones who say, <laughs> yes, there should be one, um, I, th then everything. So I'd like to get that settled and then go into the absolutely, I think that some specifics would be good. Okay. So, commissioners, do we like the idea of a section about sustainability in this? I think if there is a section, I think one of the things in my concern as well as Pablo's is that if, if it's integrated throughout all the sections that we've, and it's not its own section, we need to make sure that it is truly integrated and we know that this goal goes, this is a sustainability goal. That goal is a sustainability goal. So it's called out and we can know that that is the case. Otherwise, um, then having a separate section that calls special attention to certain issues I think is very valuable. I think one of my concerns is that, okay, it's all in all the sections, but I want to make sure it's in all the sections. Um, so the question is, dispersed through all the different sections of the downtown or a separate section that stands alone? How about a straw poll? Are, are, are we, have we had enough discussion to answer that question first? Are we going to define sustainability, though? Do we have a definite uh, de definition of what the sustainability item is? Uh, or is it just these that, that uh, we just got? I see my notes from the 27th. It covers a lot of different things under the sustainability. <coughs> what is it? The reason why I'm sorry, I think that having an explicit standalone section is precisely because it is a new thing that we add, and I think that if we just put it piecemeal here and there, it could be confusing. Um, there's a lot of different definitions that one can give us sustainability, but I think in many respects our definition is going to be expressed best by the specific goals and policies that we uh, suggest and that we put in place. Uh, otherwise, we could be having an extended uh, theoretical and philosophical discussion of sustainability that would be very interesting, but it's better had after hours <laughs> with... Uh, Let's say other clear liquids than water. Kenny maybe knows this too. There's a fairly 
simple definition that, that may be most useful, and, and I'll paraphrase it and we'll get it right so I think somebody can correct me on it, but it's basically just making sure as we use resources, financial resources, uh, environmental resources, all of our resources, our, our human resources, that we maintain those resources for future generations, that we make sure that we are not eliminating options to the extent we can, that we maintain those options for folks. And I think that, so it gets into not only land use sustainability, but also economic sustainability, there are environmental sustainability. And what we're trying to do is, I think, when we talk about the conference plan, is kind of blend all those things, that, um, focusing on the land use element of it, but it does get into economic sustainability and in environmental sustainability, just because they are all they are pretty well integrated. So, I guess Pavlos convinces me that a section that includes a definition. Uh, Probably having staff come back with that section in draft form, which is where we're at, is the best way to go about this. Uh, perhaps we, you know, for, to offer direction to staff, uh, how about a straw poll about having a separate section that includes a definition and goals and policies? For Can I add to that? that about just for downtown? Well, the. Yeah, we're specifically talking about in the downtown, but that is going to translate up eventually, yeah. much as and many other things. All like the goals lighting. for citywide, then we, we, yeah. sh we should have a definition of what we're talking about when we talk about sustainability that goes into citywide, and then it would filter down to all of the other neighborhoods. So we. Yeah, and I wonder, we might even toy with the idea of actually having a statement in there that you know, we, we realize that this has citywide implications, in it, and we, one of the recognitions of this neighborhood plan is that as we look at the city as a whole, that we incorporate this, uh, this concept, um, see why we're going to start here. Uh, we went through and, and talked about specific er areas that we might be addressing um, for a specific area of the city. These are things that we could talk about in the downtown area, for example. Mix of uses, intimate scale, emphasis on non-motorized transportation, dense urban development, public transportation. We're not recommending any of these necessarily. We're just saying these are ideas that are out there in terms of things that you may want to address public transportation, building designs that conserve energy, use of solar power, minimization of non-renewable resources and buildings, variety of housing choices, location design and operation of parks, trails, and open space, focus on water use and quality, and focus on air quality. And as you can see, most of those probably have citywide implications. Mm -hmm. When we think about what could you really do just in the downtown plan, we thought of a couple of things. We thought about you know, kind of recycling, uh, and maybe have a recycling program that's unique to downtown. Um, what else did we think of? There was some, oh, an awards program. Yeah, we thought about an awards program. Uh, maybe you know, downtown you could have an awards program for sustainable projects um, and try and get that recognition, that uh, just the, the idea of the concept, you know, kind of spread out around a little bit. Uh, so that might be a good thing, too. So, excuse me. so may I make a motion that um, I, I, just to amend a little bit of what you're saying, and I'll volunteer, Jen, uh, that. Uh, the Commission instructs Jenny and myself to work with staff to develop a specific draft section of sustainability for review by the entire Commission by the next meeting. And I think that way the so Commissioners can be involved. Um, I think something that both Jenny and I feel fairly passionate as well as professionally uh, right. work in that area. And then we can work with staff uh, to work all those things and develop something that addresses those questions. And if there's specific directions that right now uh, or in the next few days commissioners want to give, they can either state them right now or they can communicate them to uh, about to Dennis. About email them to you. Yeah. Rather than stating any more right now. Yeah, or, 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 okay. or I would say uh, email them directly to Dennis, and then when okay. we set up a Either time way. and meet, we'll be able to. Uh, yeah, that's that's better. Out. Okay, the motion is that uh, Paulos and Jenny will uh, work with staff on a sustainability section. Is that okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. Well, I think you didn't Jenny, throw anything at me, so I assume that's okay. Jenny was the second on that, I believe. Yeah. So, yes, I, I was watching that. All right, commissioners, uh, how about just a straw poll of hands? I think that's a good idea. Looks like we've got everybody. Thank you. And one of my concerns with this is that it needs to be integrated with the existing plans, and I see a lot of duplication of what we call sustainability with the actual goals and policies that have been drafted already. So it's going to be a balancing act of how to set yeah. that and, and state that up front or however you want to word it. 
Uh, I think that's all we're counting some help from the staff to make sure that that gets right. taken into place. Good. All right. That, See, Julio think, wasn't that bad. Yeah. <laughs> it, it took a pretty much a so, well, what is it, about 15? 30 seconds. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh, We're doing pretty well. we can uh, uh, go on to whatever questions you have on other sections. Okay, good. Uh, we had a question, a similar question, actually, in terms of parks. We've integrated parks, open space, and trails into land use. Uh, and we've had it both ways, in, as you know, in different drafts. But we thought you know, they were so integrated that we, we put it back in. But having read through it, we wanted to check with you and see, are you comfortable with it there? Do you think it needs to be pulled out again? Would you rather have a separate chapter for parks, open space, and trails? Or are you comfortable having it as a separate uh, integrated section? It's currently in the land use section, and all of the parts of it are together. Um, and I think that we had some questions on the matrix that that a couple of, of the commissioners said, well, maybe we should pull this out as a separate section. So I guess, you know, we're trying to be concise and include everything, so we're getting a little schizophrenic. I think Craig had a lot of input on this. <coughs> and, uh, of course, he isn't here. Any other, I, I guess I'm not, I don't, not even sure how to characterize I'm not going to try to characterize. Well, one of his comments was, do we want another public space that exists ah, within the point. city of Littleton? And I, I got the impression he thought there would be a possibility of having some kind of public space available in the downtown area. And I thought that was a nice vision. Um, is it going to happen in reality? I don't know. It could. I guess mine's more of a format question for the uh, document itself. Right now, parks and open space, uh, parks and trails, and, open our, space and trails, uh, yeah. whatever it is, all, all that green stuff, <laughs> is, is, is part of land use. Um, and I could argue it either way. Um, I could say, you know, it's, it's as much a land use as a government office or a housing development or anything else, and so it belongs in the land use section because it's how the land is used. I could argue that the, the trails are part of circulation, and so it should also be under circulation. I could argue that the three, the three things, the parks, the open space, and the trails, should all be pulled out into their own section because they are their own entity. And, and frankly, we can do anything you want. We just need to get some direction, that's all. Look, my bit. My confusion is when we have it all under land use, is that my training tells me that if you're going to talk about open space in a land use area, you know, just fundamentally we're talking residential and commercial. To me, there's always requirements for a residential and a commercial when it comes to either open space within that. A separate and akin to that is what we're talking about as parks and trails that are off-site, if you will. And I don't know if I want to get into that, create the confusion or keep it separate so the confusion is not, you know, you're not tripping over it as yep. you're going through it. Yep. So I guess what I, you know, my, my tendency is trying to say that unless you really know the differences when you're going through it, I probably would be more conservative and say separate them out so that there's a clear distinction between the two okay. and they are not confused. Linda. Well, I think uh, separating out parks and open space maintains the emphasis on, uh, and the importance of the parks and open space to the city. So, okay. A general nodding of heads is okay. Yeah. Uh, the, it's a little bit similar to the concern that I raised about sustainability is kind of incorporated. It got a little lost. It got diluted. Um, I'm, I will be okay if we have it within land use and urban design, if that seems to be the general trend, if it becomes more explicit and stands out as explicit goals and explicit policies. It, it's just mixed in a little bit and it doesn't uh, stand out. And I think that really talking about public spaces as well as, um, which was Craig's thing, would be a good thing to look at it. because. 
part of the early discussion that we had in this is that downtown area, as opposed to a lot of others, doesn't have that much in terms of parks, open space, and trails. What we discussed is, is more of the need for public spaces, which does include open space and parks. Um, trails falls a lot more into circulation and connectivity, in my opinion. So I would like to see a section in public spaces, open space, um, and parks. Again, the idea of where do people gather and where do they um, collect. If downtown is continued to be a, if not the, core area, um, that really does mean places where people can gather. And that's not, as, as Julio said, uh, open space available within the development. Uh, it's got to be that. I think I like Linda's comment. Um, it shows that we consider it and uh, sort of have a higher level of interest if we separate it into uh, another section with uh, the agreement that uh, we don't duplicate the language, you know, under circulation, under all those other areas. Uh, commissioners, does that is a separate section good? Everybody that likes a separate section for parks, open space. I'd like to see it. Mm -hmm. I think that's unanimous. Great. So, very good. I thought Linda. I, I was kind of. I it was with Sarah Jane. I could go either way. Linda said, "Well, you know, it kind of put some emphasis," and I like that. Okay. Great. Next yep. question is associative images. Um, when we went through the discussion of of. of of the pedestrian and the transportation, we were using some of those. And, and uh, we think that they're particularly useful in terms of uh, conveying images and ideas and concepts. A lot of things that we're talking about, um, either we may not have a, a great example already within the city, or we may have an example, uh, but we don't want to, you know, Insult have, anyone. <laughs> yeah, insult anybody or, or identify anybody particularly with something that, you know, if we think that it could, we're pulling it out as something could be improved. And so we look, the, we look at these associative images from other places and say, and I think as long as we label them and say, uh, here's where it's from and here's what we're going to have a caption, here's what we're trying to show, uh, that may get away from some of the confusion. Is that something you're comfortable with or is it you still prefer something else? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Really. As long as but, you... Uh, Label it, and and beyond labeling it, give us the intent. Well, we want to make a point with the caption as opposed to, right. to saying here's where it is. So, and I, however you do that, whatever the intent right. is, exactly. so that we can look at it and get the same idea of you yep. trying to convey. Yep, I think, and that especially helps when you're showing bad examples. You don't want to. Yeah, right. Do that locally. Policy. Uh, I. Considering that I assume that most of the associative images or a significant portion of them actually will not be from downtown Littleton, That's probably um, yeah. I would suggest, and I know that may be a little bit tricky, but I would feel a bit more comfortable if there were like an appendix or a separate section. There's something about the comp plan of the city of Littleton being full of pictures from other places that just strikes me as... Um, a little bit problematic. I, if we want to do illustration and other things as examples, and we talked about that, having it as an appendix or having it as a distinct section that's separate um, might be a little bit better. And just the sense that I've gotten from this community is we want to be the example, not necessarily be the ones that, that duplicate others. So I know that's a little tricky on how, yeah. on how you do it, but the great end of the discussion, yeah, because it kind of loses its, its value, its weight at least, if, if you're pulling it out of the discussion where the discussion is. And I'm throwing that as an idea because they're, they're, I am a little uncomfortable about having a lot of images that are We're from... We're talking about a lot. Not a lot. No, I don't think we would have very many. I mean, we certainly wouldn't... The majority of the images definitely would be from Littleton. And, and would, oh, yeah. That was going to be my question was... Yeah. As far as images versus text, maybe you can kind of let us know okay. um, where you end up when you integrate them. Okay. I think I like the idea of them being integrated, but uh, sparingly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, and I don't know what that means, a, a third of it. Steve, uh, I'll know it if yeah. I see it. <laughs> I, I would prefer the pictures being from Littleton. Um, and if you had to 
be pulling pictures from elsewhere in the world, um, giving it a very good text on why we're throwing pictures from elsewhere. But whenever possible, I'd prefer, I'd prefer pictures in Littleton and in most preferably downtown area. Just a footnote that says we couldn't find any bad examples in Littleton, so we had to go. <laughs> we had to go to Highlands Ranch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I would like to. Make you I don't know what you're talking about and okay. give us some examples because yeah. I'm not so sure. Well, the more I hear you all talk, the, the more confused I'm getting. So I'd like to get a, an example or right there. examples. Right there. And right okay, there. what would be the caption? This is not, this is an area where, and you know, maybe we'll think of a different phrase, but basically um, the environment is dominated by vehicles and, you know, it's not pedestrian friendly. Let me clarify, I will have no objection to bad examples from other areas, <laughs> but, um, but I just want to say that, you know, we do want to promote our own community. And maybe, too, like pick the ones that are more scale-oriented yeah. to little right. towns. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I agree. Yes. Right. So yeah, because the upper scale, it's hard right. to relate to. Yeah. Champs-Élysées <laughs> is not really appropriate. <laughs> There's more people on that section of road that you did than the city of Littleton. <laughs> I do like the, um, the percentage of yeah. a high, much higher percentage in Littleton and then lower percentage of other examples. But I yet, I do like it interdispersed inter so that... I know I'm a picture person, so I'll oftentimes be drawn to certain pictures. Oh, where was? Oh, yeah. So, and then I want to read on more. So, if it's if it pulls people to into the text, I think it'll be really helpful. Okay. okay. Can, can I also suggest that it's just an idea that I'm throwing out because I don't know who's uh, who's really good with Photoshop, um, but maybe if we're gonna how about, I mean, there are filters that you can do in Photoshop. If you're going to put in a really good design from somewhere else of the picture, maybe uh, converting it into something that looks a little bit more like a drawing and a little bit less like a photograph, so it's more illustrative rather than saying this. And that gives us an idea. Well, if our budget were to allow it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's possible to go in and do some amazing things in terms of taking an existing street, existing you know, section of a block, saying here's what it would look like with these improvements, with these changes, whatever it might be. Yeah, you can do that. It, it's expensive to do it, but it's a wonderful thing. No, but I think that there may be even some ways in which photographs that are brought in can be changed a little bit, you know, uh, so that they don't look like that then becomes more of illustration. So okay. uh, I'll play with it a little bit, too, and see if I can come up with it. Okay. Well, and I think... Once we have it, we might have some suggestions as to where to take the photograph. Like, for example, the picture on the left there, I mean, I can see that the old Safeway in downtown Littleton might, you know, next to um, Bedford Auto Body, might give us the picture that we need to be able to convey that image. Mm -hmm. So once we the, see the it, then The we savers, can... that's right now? No, no, not um, the savers. Um, next to the, the old Safeway, next to Bradford Auto Body, uh, next to Merle's. Oh, okay. it's set, yeah. set back. Yeah, yeah. so you yeah. can see the parking similar to that. Although they may not appreciate being used as a bad example. <laughs> so we that's, can label that's it. That's a dilemma. Yeah, we really can label it as Highlands yeah. Ranch. We can find them. <laughs> um, <laughs> if that's enough direction, yeah, sure maybe we've got one more category there, I think which I was, I think, sort of economic development. And I'm I'm curious as to your question regarding that. Uh, um, the city that, has a good program, if not, right. you know, setting the standard for every other city. That comes, again, from the matrix of comments that we got from the commissioners. And um, I believe it was Linda that brought that up, so maybe she can explain herself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now you're on the hook. <laughs> well, is this a goal that we want the city to undertake, you know, collaborate with the merchants and proper property owners for economic development specific to the downtown area and in addition to the economic gardening? I would say continue, not in addition to, but as a continuation of that economic gardening concept. And I think it's in the comprehensive plan now 
in some form, which I don't remember. I think yeah, it is, there is something you're, in there. Mm -hmm. It is something you're doing now, mm -hmm. right, Dennis? It's something we do. I, I think when you think about the lighting downtown, when you think about just even staff attending the Hoodla meetings, mm -hmm. when you think about the cooperation with the special events in terms of police uh, protection, and you think about trash collection downtown. Uh, the, I walked down Main Street this morning, the city staff was shoveling sidewalks. You know, it's that kind of stuff, as well as just the cooperation uh, in terms of focus on their issues, uh, what BIA does in terms of the marketing, in terms of what they do, in terms of working with individual retailers. So there's a whole sense of, of this is a public-private you know, partnership in terms of how we make this work. Um, and the city, I think, of Littleton is unusual in terms of you know, how, how strong that coalition is. Uh, and I guess the question is, do we want to reinforce that with a statement? Um, so. I would think that, yes, uh, to reinforce the same as a collaboration between uh, public-private, between uh, city and government in economic development, but not only in economic development. And, and so, uh, some general statement, whether that is in the kind of the preamble or anything, to just continue to say that all I really don't see any of our policies and goals and sections within the plan that cannot benefit from ongoing and enhanced collaboration between citizens, citizen organizations, merchant property owners, as well as departments. And we want to put that there of this isn't something that is going to be done. The city is not just mm -hmm. the building, you know, the people that work in this building. The city is everybody. It is. Uh, and that it has to be a collaboration of everybody for this to work. And to help achieve the goal, the exactly. vision for downtown or something like that, rather than the economic. Okay, good. Julio? How, would, how does a city grade its uh, collaboration with the merchants and properties? Is it an A, B, C? I, I don't know. And I'm, it's a good question. And I, I, mean, mean, I guess my co if it's a C, uh -huh. then I'd – or something like, along those I would, lines. I would say as somebody then, who's, who's relatively new to the city of Littleton and comes from you know, other cities, I'd give it an A. I well, mean, that's my what point. I've seen. Yeah, well, it's, that's it's what I'm alluding amazing. to. If you already got a – something that's already doing in the 90s and mm -hmm. call it an A, mm -hmm. then the question is, you're talking about tweaking things. You're not talking about major changes. Or, or just supporting what you've got. Just, exactly. Yeah, you're just saying, and you're, I, and I guess just I'm, reinforcing that. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if it was 45 or 30s or whatever, right. then I'd have a bigger issue. Right. The, the third statement under implementation strategies uh, for economic development is the city will continue to co collaborate with the merchants and property owners to enhance economic activity in downtown sort of indicates the uh, continuation uh, effort could be enhanced by a strong property owner and merchant organization well hoodlum and uh, economic gardening program I think that statement is good and if there was some editing to do maybe reduce some of that other in that section I know I've been after you guys to reduce the scale of this whole thing. At least I'm consistent. We just got two more sections tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But that doesn't mean it has to grow. <laughs> All right. We've got about three minutes left. Um, seemingly, we may have gotten through most of it your questions. Yeah. No. Very good. Thank you. Commissioners, I have one other item to note. The city manager indicated that there is going to begin a nationwide search for a uh, director of community development and uh, that of course is an item of interest for the planning commission because uh, we end up working very closely with the acting director and i believe dennis has indicated that he's going to uh, uh, pursue that position and um, with that said yeah any other announcements or one minute or less discussions linda next steps in the comp plan process next steps uh, we'll Very come good. back with the draft um and what we want to do of course is get as close as we possibly can again we're not going to do a final edit uh so we we appreciate the comments we're trying to get as close as we possibly can but we keep rewriting things so we keep making mistakes along the way and things could be improved we are shortening it dramatically we're getting a more concise document which i think is 
exactly what city council is looking for, but I think it works very well when you actually have a plan that people use, you have it as concise as possible. So we're pleased with that. Um, so in two weeks we'll have a meeting. We don't have any regular business schedule for that at this point, so it'll be a complete work session. Um, and then again, just kind of generally for the public at home, what we will do is we'll have a final draft that we'll put out to, for staff review and for public review, uh, and then we'll have a public hearing before planning commission, and then planning commission will adopt or not adopt the plan um, and can incorporate comments you know, from that public hearing um, in, into the plan and then send that on to city council for ratification. And they again will in effect adopt the plan that's officially ratifying what plan commission has adopted. So it's two public hearings in the process um, and we want to get as much uh, public input as possible. And so we appreciate everybody's uh, participation. One quick question, any more public hearings anticipated? Uh, we have some more coming up. We don't have anything scheduled currently, but we do right. have some that are out there just depending on when the applicants get material back into us and, sure. and how we can schedule that. So. All right. How about a motion to adjourn? Move that we adjourn. Second. And all those in favor? Aye. Bye. <laughs>